Good evening, afternoon, and morning, depending on where you're at. And welcome back to another Q&A here on the Sergeant Tank Pets YouTube channel. If you haven't done so, go ahead and do me a favor. Put on those post notifications. Hit that subscribe button for any fish and aquarium-related topics. Uh, and do it yourself, which is something that I'm going to talk about here um, in a few moments. But uh, let's head on over to the chat and see what we got going on. Uh, congratulations to everybody over at Gina Tucker and the contest giveaways. Uh, if you guys happen to watch this for whatever reason and you entered into that specific drawing, uh, just ensure that you do what you're supposed to head over there and check it out and uh, provide the uh, necessary information in order for her to get in contact with you. So again, congratulations. Uh, a lot of great giveaways and so forth. Uh, so we got, uh, looks like, we got, uh, oh, wow, Frank Dominguez coming in as second, coming in as Dose. Uh, I think it's Coot, Coot Nix. Uh, we got uh, Mario uh, Vi. Let's see. We got White in the House, Susan. Uh, we got Mimi's Aquatics, Swag, Skywalker, Jennifer, Sarchicino. Uh, we got Joseph, Cecilia, Island Queen, Patricia, and KG Cichlids. Uh, that is not going to happen, Kevin. That is not going to happen. Um, but I double, triple dogged area uh, to take a Clark Eye Crayfish that's full grown and replace those clamps to go ahead and utilize that thing um, because it will be bit off, O-F-F -F off. Yeah. So anyway, uh, if you guys want to know uh, specifically what's going on with that, you can check out KG Sickles live stream from late, late last night, early this morning. You can check it out um, and, uh, and look at all the shenanigans that were going on. So for whatever reason, I didn't get a notification uh, until like five minutes before, 10 minutes before the live stream was concluded. Uh, so I think I completely jinxed myself when I said I never had an issue as far as getting notifications because generally I don't get any issues with notifications. So we got uh, White in the House, DPK Fish Aquariums. We got Candy Overhauls. Uh, you supply the crayfish, I'll come up with the rest. Um, you will never do it, bud. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a Clark Eye strain in person but uh they get quite massive and can do a lot of damage uh let's see here thank you white uh shaking so nervous all right uh gina sending you an email with a word document in it all right all right you guys so again this is an opportunity for you guys to try to ask any uh, any questions uh, that I might be able to answer for you, and I'll do my due diligence to give you my honest and overall assessment or feedback based on whatever questions in regard to aquarium or fish keeping. And uh, just try to focus and keep it freshwater, tropical fish related versus that of saltwater. Um, I could always live stream at the local Red Lobster. Go for it. <laughs> Uh, can you do a white worm culture vid? Uh, I don't do anything with white worm cultures, uh, so I can't really, not going to do a video uh, since I'm not going to, I already do um, enough live cultures as it is. I've done black worm cultures. Uh, we currently have vinegar eels and uh, micro worms. I find that plenty above and beyond sufficient. Actually, micro worms alone can generally feed most things uh, for quite a period of time. But yeah. Uh, Corvus asking in the house. We got Joel. Uh, what is the contest I hear of? It is already concluded, my friend. That was over at Gina Tucker. Uh, did a contest for a 200 subs giveaway. I know that she's already surpassed that uh, that 200 milestone mark. However, she just concluded that live stream. So if anybody uh, wants to go over and check out uh, once that's processed and uploaded, uh, then you can definitely head on over to Gina Tucker and check it out. Uh, we got the uh, Bearded Aquarium Kings. Let's see here. 
how big uh, African leaf get and what do they eat? Uh, never kept one. Um, I've seen them. They're not hard to come by locally. We can get them at a market. Um, in I would say intermediate care requirements and as far as what they eat um, I would give them definitely a balance between carbohydrates and proteins um, but yeah I would have to uh, utilize a little bit of Google research to identify exactly what the biggest size is recorded um, but they can get decent in size uh, will dog guppies eat microworms? Yeah. Uh, have you heard of anyone keeping uh, alimia snails? Uh, Google hasn't brought up anything from me. I'm not sure on that one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, can you give me a how to care for Kerbenzis? Uh Yeah. I mean, generally, I keep them anywhere in a temperature range of, you know, mid 70s. So you can comfortably keep them anywhere from 70, 71 to 75. Uh, I know other folks keep them at a little bit higher temperature. However, I don't think it's necessary to do so. Uh, they'll breed pretty much like uh, guppies, uh, given the appropriate conditions. Uh, you can keep generally like a pair of family cribenzas. I would keep them in a 20 long. Um, same thing like with your poultry stains or your Nigerian reds, uh, depending on what variant you have. And uh, I would just put a pair in there, a uh, valid pair, dominant pair. Uh, if you're getting them young, get a group of them, six to eight, let them pair off and go ahead and separate them that way. Uh, give them plenty of plants. They're cave spawners. Throw in a uh, uh, coconut cave. You can make your own do-it-yourself cave, and uh, typically they'll just they'll pair off. Uh, you'll see the, uh, the female get a really, really nice pink plump belly. Uh, even the males will start to kind of flare and show a little bit of pink in their uh, abdominal area. And... Uh, Generally, uh, they'll go ahead and deposit, be fertilized, and then the uh, oftentimes a male will actually care after the eggs. Uh, at what point I would actually pull the parents once they become uh, free swimming. But generally, they'll usually do a decent job as far as not eating the fry, given the appropriate hiding spaces and so forth. Uh, now, overall, total dissolved solids, if you're looking at that, uh, we keep ours anywhere from 200 to 400 range. Uh, pH anywhere from seven six to eight two uh so they are pretty hardy species let's see here fish out of water is in the house uh, i have a guppy and it doesn't look well uh, i have pictures but i can't post a link what do you think the description matches white spot of size uh half penny next to the tail it could just be an external ulcer uh, i've done if you look back at my repertoire videos i've done a how and I care for external ulcers before they actually embed themselves further. However, we generally don't like to, within the community, give exact, decise, and direct response on how to go about treating or caring for uh, just because it's very, very difficult to sell. Tell there's so many variables, even on imaging and so forth. But if you want to check it out, um, the best thing you can do, lots of resources online. Try to determine what it is first and foremost. Uh, obviously, through different imaging and that, you can generally tell and get a baseline on how to go about appropriately treating. And oftentimes, it uh, could just be a simple wound. Uh, could have scraped up against something if it was flashing for whatever reason. Uh, could hurt itself. These guys behind me, it happens all the time. Generally, good water regimens and so forth will typically take care of it. Uh, however, you might have to take the next step and go ahead and, uh, and medicate or possibly quarantine, depending on uh, what point or what stage it's at. Uh, but yeah, Mario said, uh, I don't know, how would you, Chilo from Idaho. Uh, let's see here, we got Jotter in Aquatics. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Uh, if anybody hasn't, go ahead. After this is done, head on over to Jetter and Aquatics. Take a look at that video. Uh, Fish Fam calendars, if you're looking at a cool 52 pictured Fish Fam calendar from January to January of 2019. So January 2018, January 2019. Uh, you can definitely go ahead and head on over there and check it out. I want to say it's $10 for U.S., $13 outside, which you cannot beat that. So... 
Let's see here. Uh, Sean Hilton's in the house. How you doing? Michael Trevino's in the house. What's going on? We got Joel Gillett, New Zealand, glass boxes. I think Joel and I have been around. When you're talking OG, original gangster here in the fish fam, um, I've been around. I'm ancient. Um, probably one of the first. And I know Kevin's been around. KG Sickler's been around for a long time as well. I know Joel's been around. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. Um, how long everybody's been around. And that was before I started doing YouTube. I uh, just found Jodron last night. Watched a bunch of videos. He has a great channel. I can curb me these aquatics. Uh, we should make a sexiest fish keepers calendar. <laughs> Frank Dominguez said. Um, no comment. Uh, an excuse to get me out of the uh, the bikini prank. Where is this? Where is this going? Uh, let's see here. Michael Javino said, I got to meet Priscilla in person. I feel so honored. Laugh out loud. Yeah, I think you got the, uh, is it going to a 180, Michael? The Pleco? Something like that. I know you got like a big, big old, big old tank for that thing, which is cool to see. I'm the hashtag fish fan mom. I've only been around for a year. You are, Susan. Uh, this year has definitely just excelled. Uh, we started putting out videos here. Uh, I always referred to we, however, obviously I started putting out videos here on this channel. Officially, I want to say it was December 26th or 27th of 2016. So last year, but I've been around on the inner, inner tubes, inner tube, interwebs, uh, for a long time was very active in chats and stuff like that but then i decided to join the bandwagon and start putting out videos let's see here uh, queen's been here for a year uh michael said yep play in there and happy as could be uh, how often do you have to restart a microworm culture week wise how much does a mashed potatoes cost uh, check. I'm not sure where you're located, if you're in the States or not. Uh, however, I'm not sure if you checked out the video that I did on culturing of mic worms. It is very easy. A couple different methods for which you can use. Uh, the one I, I mentioned there is the instant mashed potato method. However, you can do oatmeal, you can utilize yeast. Uh, I just try to simplify it and keep it easy. It just depends on what you're keeping at. If you keep it at colder, a little bit cooler temperatures, it's not going to reproduce as fast. That's why oftentimes some folks do actually put it in the refrigerator and kick it up to right around 40, 45 degrees-ish, uh, which I wouldn't obviously be keeping other food in there, considering the fact your refrigerator should be at uh, steady 38 to 40, um, so you don't have any uh, bacteria issues with your own consumption of your people food, if that makes sense. But yeah, so if you keep them around 68 to mid-70s, uh, you should have to basically keep up with it about every two weeks but that video breaks it down way more detail we got uh, fish traffic in the house how you doing buddy uh anyone have any advice on clear for life 100 125 gallon acrylic tanks uh love the new mic jet and aquatic said let's see I guess they're in February, March. Uh, glass box said Flynn got me talking initially. Um, I'm trying to for the external altar, but can't find it. Uh, can I get the link? Thanks. 
Uh, let's see here. If somebody don't mind providing that link, that'd be awesome. Uh, my two-year-old freaking freaking loves him. Ha ha. Uh, must be talking about the Playco. <laughs> uh, tell your fish to stop being good. Um, those guys are well trained, Fish Tropic. Um, let's see here. All I got to do is give them the stanky eye. Give them the people's eyebrow. Do you smell what the sergeant is cooking? I better be careful in what I say. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, I live in Virginia. 15 and broke with... Strict parents, a sponge filter donation would be appreciated. Uh, let's see here. Just got to save up your money. Um, the video he was talking about external at white. The video he was talk talking about. Uh, Mimi's Aquatics is wondering if plants help cycle a tank. I uh, wouldn't really look at plants as far as cycling a tank. Uh, I wouldn't even be putting plants in the tank when you're initially trying to cycle it because you might be actually combating the overall beneficial bacterium colonization that you need within that water column. So I would uh, simply do, as I've talked about before, the jump start of your nitrification cycle um, without the utilization of plants. That's just me personally. I think you would help jumpstart it faster and quicker uh, without introducing plants for a week or two after you introduce a seasoned or a seeded sponge or medium for whatever you're trying to utilize in order to help jumpstart that nitrogen cycle. Uh, let's see here. What is the worst mistake? What is the worst mistake you have done in the fish room this month? Um, I don't know about this month. Um, hmm. Probably, well, it wasn't on my end. It was out of my control. However, there was some plants that ended up finding out which was out of their control as well. Didn't realize that they're actually uh, pesticides. Did not affect the fish. However, it took out uh, quite a few, which I did talk about that. I didn't do a video on it. I talked about it on a live stream. However, it did take out a colony of my Heteropoda neocaridinia, uh, which I did it as a test. So I did lose maybe five or ten. However, I was able to revive uh, the majority of them, which are still in quarantine. Uh, but other than that... Um, I'm about keeping things alive and I'm not, uh, I'm just being bold and very transparent. Uh, I had, I definitely have had my failures through the years, but in all honesty, I've lost in probably well over five years, less than two handfuls of fish and 80% of those was actually out of pure aggression. And the other 20% was actually out of, um, out of my control. Uh, it was things that I rehomed. Uh, because when I find something that uh, needs to be brought back to life or given to me, it's hard for me to pass that up. And unfortunately, um, you know, I've been well consistent to the hobby for over 12 years. Uh, the first quarter of that time, I kill a lot of stuff, uh, as I've talked about before. Uh, the last several years since, um, very minimal. Um, and I'm just being completely honest. Um, my first and foremost goal is to ensure I do everything in my power to quarantine, to detox, to do all the things I mentioned before to keep things live. Um, I brought back a lot of things from life, however, just through aggression, through age, uh, and so forth, I have had my fair share of losses. But like I said, if I would add up all the things I lost in that first few years of getting back into the hobby it would be too much to um, count but when I literally have bred thousands upon thousands of different uh, fish um, speaking not different species of fish so let me clarify that 
Uh, I couldn't tell you how many different species of fish, a lot. It's not in the thousands, but um, as far as overall raising and rearing of the fry, different non and live bearing species, uh, very limited in overall, um, what do you want to say, um, loss. <sighs> what are your thoughts on pond canister filters on tanks? Um, pond canister filters, I would be concerned about too much of a turnover rate. Uh, depends. I mean, if you're talking what I'm thinking you're talking, you're talking turnover rate on those things are probably 50 times turnover rate from what you need to because of the volume and the gallons per hour. Uh, I would recommend anywhere from eight to times turnover rate, multiply that by whatever tank size you have. So if you have, let's say a 90 gallon tank, the rule of thumb is you should have about anywhere between eight and 10 turnover rates. So 900 gallon per hour. However, there is some variances in there just due to the fact it really has to come down to overall bacteria and the bacterium and so forth that's within the water column because you have to realize the nitrogen cycle if people understand uh and if you don't understand nitrogen cycle i'm not going to go into it i've talked about it um i would hope anybody at this point has done their due diligence if they're keeping fish to first and foremost realize and understand what the nitrogen cycle is uh but with that being said um, it really comes down to bio load and everything else. I myself personally wouldn't be utilizing it unless it was a very, very large size aquarium. Uh, learn failures and lessons is how I can now keep plants alive. Yep. Um, I find it very difficult when I hear individuals utilize the, I wish the verbiage and the vocabulary of anybody calling themselves or putting themselves into a category of an expert is completely removed especially within this hobby i've yet to find anybody as an expert um you know that's just me what i always say i'm an expert at failing a lot that's what got me through life in general i failed miserably so much that i just try not to repeat if you do what you always done you're going to get what you always got however one of the one of my biggest pet peeves within the in the community and in the hobby is when somebody tries to give their quote-unquote opinion we know what opinions equivalent to and I'm not going to mention that here uh, but all of us have one so with that being said it's just like I wish sometimes individuals would zip their lip and um, realize that everybody has success in different ways because there's so many variables uh, based on what ecosystem the overall environments for which we keep fish how we go about keeping fish what our husbandry is like uh there is so many different variables in this hobby uh that individuals just need to find out what they can do to keep their fish alive and stick with it know what keeps them alive because what i apply here and i go to somebody else's that's in a whole different demographic I could lose and wipe out everything because what I'm doing here may not work at in C or D, but we try to take all the information that we can. We try to evaluate and assess. And a lot of times that's through process of elimination. However, one of just, I, I bite my tongue when I hear so much negativity and so much of this is the way or the highway this this hobby isn't all puppy dogs and rainbows uh you know it's just like it it comes with its ups and downs and it comes with its challenges um you know and that's just my rant over with however uh i bite my tongue a lot i mean i could sit here and criticize um and try to make a point or try to point out this okay you should be doing it this way you should be doing it that way the way I look at it is if you can keep fish alive and you can rise above when you have losses, I commend those individuals. It is a press forth even when you have catastrophes that happen in the fish room. Don't give up. Realize, learn from it. Try not to repeat that again and continue to press forth. You know, um, but yeah. So I just learned about you and I'm glad I did. Um, well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let's see here. We got uh, Mike in the house. Said nice shirt. Yes, got this from my uh, 
my buddy down there, Mike Girati from Imperial Tropicals. Uh, if you guys haven't, definitely I'm not being paid for by or endorsed by. Um, but uh, by far, excellent, excellent dude, and uh, has an excellent fish farm. And uh, I did do a video. You guys can check it out back in the springtime when we were down in Florida. Um, so feel free to go back and check it out. Uh, let's see here. Fish Tropic said, Jeremy, you are a special expert. I am no expert. I, I absolutely despise of that word. And it's outside of fish keeping. Because I find it very difficult when, even with my own medical condition and issues, I can sit here and talk circles around most, quote unquote, people who consider themselves experts. I mention certain just basic terminology and they're like, what are you even talking about? Just basic stuff. And it's just like, you know, back in my days of training, I trained people who had master's degrees. I trained people straight out of the military that had all of this different education. To me, it's life, hands-on, education, get in the workforce, and do, do not try. I absolutely hate when, when my kids always say, I'm trying. I'm like, I'm a doer, not a trier. I feel that trying fails, doing actually is what succeeds. And that's what got me successful in the hobby. I got tired of trying, and I just did. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, if you're in Toronto and need a culture, hit me up. Uh, does a strong air stone help uh, dechlorinate water? Uh, no. Uh, dechlorination needs to happen before. Um, uh, now, if you're talking... All right, so I think probably what you're talking about is if you have some sort of aeration in a reservoir side container for which you're trying to dilute or uh, what do you want to say, uh, excrete any type of um, pollutants or excess minerals or so forth within your municipal water source, if you're on a municipal water source. Uh, but however I feel based on previous testing that I've done and kind of testing that theory, the appropriate way to actually quote unquote dechlorinate is to use like a primer safe. And I've talked about this time and time again, uh, when we do manual water changes here, uh, anything which 90% of our systems plus is all on a manual basis, just so I can actually focus and keep an eye on it. And then I just top it off with uh, reservoirs that I have set aside. Uh, where they're pre-dechlorinated, brought the room temperature, and then they're actually sat for a period of, you know, 24 to 48 hours before it's actually introduced into any one of our setups. Um, but uh, I find that that's what has worked the most effective for myself. And uh, But you can go ahead and tap off, uh, you know, if I was doing, let's say, 25% water change on this, this is on auto drip system, ran through carbon blocks and so forth. But... Uh, if this was uh, not on that and I was doing manual water changes, the way I would do it is typically do a 20, 25% water change. And then I'll go ahead and then uh, go ahead and add the chlorinator and then uh, utilize why I added the chlorinator. And then I'm topping it off, uh, brought to the appropriate temperature and so forth. Uh, and then, yeah, I never had any issues. Let's see. Have you ever kept on during red points? Uh, so... I uh, don't believe I have that now. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> have you seen those Aquion can uh, canister filters? trying to think I don't know uh, I'm not sure let's see here uh, what is green water has to you do it also black water what is it and how to do it uh, black water is typically something really really murky so of course you're gonna find a lot of black water I don't know. I mean, to me, black water is simply a lot of tannins in the tank. 
a little bit more acidic rather than more alkalinity. And it really depends on why you're utilizing black water in the first place. Uh, is there a reason, basis why you're doing that to try to alter? Um, but, you know, with that being said, as far as green water, um, typically you're going to utilize green water. The way I used to get a lot of green water is just natural sunlight um and uh just would have a tank you know right in front of uh, a window usually south side so it's hitting on that um on that uh throughout the most of the day and then i'll go ahead and then be able to establish green water from that sense um but you can use green water for daphnia culturing and uh other uh you know, as far as feeding a fry and so forth. Let's see. Uh, we got Tim in the house. How you doing, buddy? Let's see here. Uh, I'm starting to think I need reservoirs. I've been running a hose through the window for bigger tanks. Uh, like I said, it's not a it's not a necessity. Uh, however, you know, I just the big reasons I do it is because I have a lot of you know, like I said, literally probably 95% of my tanks are all breeding setups and grow outs uh, with small fry embryos and I'm growing out. So I have to be a little bit more cautious to ensure there isn't great deals of fluctuations that may inhibit some negative effects from doing so. And then another big aspect is to ensure that everything within that temperature controlled environment since those reservoirs are in the same area that I keep the other systems uh, that they can be brought to the appropriate temperature uh, without having to actually heat the reservoir separately. So that's why I wait usually 24 to 48 hours, uh, depending on what time of the year it is. Uh, why not grow some plants? Let's see. Uh, trying is a first step towards failure. I concur. Uh, Susan said, I'm sleepy. Broke down 25 gallon today because after treating it with HCO2, uh, went bad. Uh, never been in the military, no. No military affiliation. Uh, and the other question to benefits of an air stone is the appropriate aeration uh, and turnover that you need as far as providing the, the appropriate distribution of oxygen and airflow. So you can therefore try to minimize or reduce anaerobic and aerobic conditions that could be um, exposed within your aquarium. Did you get the ponds for tractor supply? Yes, I got those on sale. Those are 100 gallon stock tanks. Um, got a phenomenal deal on them. So, oftentimes, usually two or three times a year, ensure that you are signed up to get their flyer, depending on where you're at. And generally, you can get, um, yeah, uh, usually that's where you're going to see the coupons. So, these were on sale, and I also had a $20 off coupon on top of that. So, it worked out well. Uh, let's see here. I would like to try shell dwellers, but don't want a tank with just fish leaving on the bottom. If I got a higher tank, like a 29, do you think an African butterfly will work for the top? Um, let me take a look again. It's been a long time. I don't recall the, the requirements. If I remember, an African butterfly can be a little bit 
sensitive, but let's see here. I don't, I've never actually kept those. They're pretty unique. Bear with me a second, you guys. I guess the first thing I would do is try to get those that have been conditioned over because it appears here if you're getting them through like an F0 through wild caught that they prefer more acidic. Uh, so that could definitely play a role in some potential issues there. Uh, let's see here. Um, grow the five inches. They should not be kept with been eating or aggressive fish. Um, looks like they enjoy, which I thought that's was would have been my one concern. Is it appears that they can be finicky as far as with dry foods, uh, so you'll want to utilize like crickets, some sort of like live insects, and this is right through Wikipedia, guys. I just find the best resource is through Wikipedia. I really feel that you'll find the most viable information versus forums and anything else. So anytime I try to obtain any type of um, looking at species identification, looking at care requirements, looking at the overall um, reproduction, looking at gender identification, looking at I really that's my first course that I go through for over any any forum um, so I like to go right to the source and I find that 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 to me has been the best but that's just my experience uh, and it does show on here um, I'm trying to look and see uh, looks like they like a temp yeah, so they can handle a temp range 73 to 86 they are found, like I said, a little bit more acidic, standing bodies of water, which I do know with keeping the Irvine eye, I don't have a lot of turnover, a ton of turnover rate um, in a lot of, um, what do you want to say, aeration or air, air movement or water movement, I mean. And they seem to like that. They enjoy that, at least for me, a little bit better than heavy, heavy movement. Um, so it came down to it. If I was going to try it, I would go ahead and give it a try. Um, I think you'd be fine. So, all right. Let's see here. If not anything else, you would suggest for some movement near the surface. Uh, but my experience with Wikipedia has been trustworthy. Do, 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 do. Let's see. All right. What is going on, Anthony? All right, you guys, any other, uh, let's see here, questions or anything, feel free to go ahead and let me know. Uh, thanks so much, Susan. Have a great night.
Uh, Jackie is wondering if I would like some red Texas for the tank behind me. Uh, no, I wouldn't add anything else to this tank. Eventually, they're going to be distributed. Um, they're already at capacity, so I wouldn't wouldn't add anything else um, to the tank. Uh, what kind of stuff do you like to talk about? Um, I've done literally probably 200 live streams, uh, if not more, and probably 50% of those I didn't even upload or removed. Um, but yeah, I've literally have probably talked just about every topic, uh, so that's why I'm just doing open Q&A. Let's see, because even, uh, even with a topic base, Generally, only takes up 15, 20 minutes, I find, based on all the live streams I've done. Uh, like, what would be a question you wish someone would ask you? Uh, well, I can't. That <laughs> um, yeah, you guys just need to ask me the question. Um, obviously, uh, if there's no questions, then there's no questions. So, Jeremy, what are your other hobbies? Uh, this is it right now. Uh, I used to be an RC guy. I uh, used to do a lot with uh, radio control, more hobby grade. But uh, we got Rock Heel and Gold and Green Severums are the ones, those variants uh, behind us. Let's see here. Uh, Tim said, come and help me. I don't do anything uh, when it comes to anything too physically intensive. So I have helpers. I'm here to guide and direct. Uh, what door sickly go into 29? Uh, five pencils, eight Colombian tetras, 20 neon tetras, and five autos. Uh, I would keep it at that. I wouldn't be adding anything else if it, if it were me. If you're trying to look at something to add on top of that, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't be adding anything else to a 29. Let's see. We got Gary's Aquatics. Uh, I got a new fish tank, and last night I got Green Spotted Puffer. That's awesome. Uh, Joseph was wondering what I'm bringing to the Christmas party tomorrow for Dish Bass Out. I think we're making a... Uh, um, it's a three, two, one dip. It's a, it's a really good spicy dip. Uh, what's your favorite live foods to feed? Uh, since I really use live foods just strictly at this point, uh, for, uh, fry grow out is vinegar eels and micro worms. It is heavily planted to take bio load uh, I still wouldn't advise of it that's just me um, yeah so I'm just giving my my I wouldn't I wouldn't want to advise anything I wouldn't do myself so not to say it's not accomplished or not, you know what I mean that you can accomplish it. However, I just personally wouldn't do it. Let's see here. Uh, do you breed any hybrids? Uh, I don't. No, I not necessarily anything against anything as far as hybrids go. Uh, just depends on what you're talking about because a lot of stuff in this hobby at this point has been hybridized over the years. Uh, how do you culture vinegar eels? I still have to hit that upload button, Fish Tropic. Uh, very easy to do though. Uh, lots of videos out there on how to do it. So the main components to it is water, uh, apple cider vinegar, and apples, and your starter culture, which is something that we do carry on the website. Uh, why is everyone push pushing Norfin? Is the markup higher than uh, New Life Spectrum? I'm not sure, Anthony. Um, I know that uh, there's been a lot of um, uh, successful feedback with the North Fin. However, it's not anything I personally have tried out. It's kind of one of those things, if it's not broke, I fix it. Uh, the ones I've talked about before uh, that I enjoy to use is what I'm just going to continue to use. Uh, so therefore, I'm not going to change anything. Uh, green spotted puffers start in brackish and they're full marina's adults. Let's see here. 
when an air stone don't the air bubble reach the surface too fast for the water to actually absorb any uh, oxygen rely on surface agitation which can also achieve by filter surface water movement uh, that's why I always recommend natural waste uh, rather than air stone so if you want natural turnover at the bottom so I look at everything in thirds so you have your bottom you have your middle and then you have your top I think a good well established ecosystem is something that you can maintain livestock wise at the bottom that's going to basically be kicking up and moving about to keep things constantly moving that's why I really enjoy uh, Ancestrous Placos and a lot of different setups for that various reason. You can use auto sink lists. Uh, you can use other bottom dwelling species, and then you would want to find like a mid mid to top dwelling fish, which oftentimes uh, a lot of which you know can uh, can go back and forth. So let's see here. Uh, hey, Anthony, have a great evening. Let's see here. Uh, could I grow dwarf hair grass with a low tech tank? So far, I've mostly seen people keeping them. Uh, to I would say higher light, uh, but I can't speak on experience that it's uh, that you're going to able to accomplish what you're looking for. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be the one to. Uh, to be able to give you any advice on that. Uh, good good topic to hit on. How do you feel about wild-caught fish versus captive bred? Oh, Lord, help me. Um, let's see here. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it uh, whatsoever. I mean, if you want to look at overall preservation and conser conservation when it comes to just things in general. Um, the way I look at any type of controversial pro, um, controversial topic, uh, I got absolutely nothing against it whatsoever. So um, I feel that we definitely need to do our due diligence uh, and our overall husbandry and upkeep as fish keepers, as hobbyists, as individuals who keep pets to provide the appropriate environment to keep things sustainability and keep them alive for the most amount of time that we can possibly do. So understand everything in your power to do what's best for this livestock in order to keep it alive. And then from that standpoint, if you feel that you cannot, if you're not 100% confident that you can able to do that, then you shouldn't be in the hobby. Um, but what I always push back on, and it's very hypocritical and contradictive for folks to side with one specific topic over another. So if somebody's saying, I'm against alcohol, but yet I go and shop at Meyer. Meyer sells alcohol. So does that mean that you're contributing to the sales, even though you're not personally purchasing the alcohol or liquor from a specific store? If you're still shopping that environment, are you now in a sense still kind of condoning some of that behavior by still supporting that specific store? Uh, so everybody has their own little feedback in and but i find most of the time probably 95 percent of those individuals that speak of it on a negative basis have zero experience uh it kind of goes back to what i was first talking about from the very beginning uh anybody that calls themselves experts i just wish that entire word and vocabulary that was taken out of vocabulary altogether because i've yet to find anybody um in my lifetime that is a true expert an expert to me is somebody who never fails. Have you done everything in your life where everything is perfect? No, because I think this, the absolute success to sustainability and longevity wise of being a human being is through the process of failure is what makes somebody successful. And when somebody just jumps to the conclusion or just thinks that they have all the answers to everything, it just irks me. Um, because again, when I have bred hundreds of different fish through the years and I know my sustainability, as I said, let's talk about percentages, 95% of the stuff I've been keeping for well over, um, you know, t t uh, eight to nine years now, uh, as far as, uh, keeping many different species of fish and keeping things alive is my biggest goal. 
and ensure that, you know, when, when the topic comes thinking about mom, I just get a kick out of it, you know, and, and it's just like another pet peeve of mine. It's like, you cannot keep tanks with mom because it's going to house this. It's going to house that. There's so many different variables in those statements that people cannot truly break down the scientific process. Even if you quote unquote, consider yourself an expert, I want somebody to take one month and break down every single microscopic organism that's being housed within that mulm bed or that detritus bed and tell me out of the hundred and thousands of different microorganisms that you're pulling up, I wanna know exactly which each one of those microorganisms has as far as the overall impact on our hobby. These are the things I would start pushing back to folks. If you're gonna sit here and start blowing smoke out of your hind end, is a start be able to give viable information versus hitting that Google button and now doing your due diligence and research to try to identify and try to preach something that you have no idea what you're talking about. Because I want you to take that to a chemist lab and I wanna see specifically exactly every single microscopic organism that's going on in every one of somebody's setups because you would have to take a hundred different individuals and look and see, I guarantee out of those hundred different individuals and those thousands of different tanks that they have, not one is gonna be exactly the same as the other. So again, that's where variability comes in. And I think it really just needs, people just need to keep their damn mouth shut at the end of the day and do what they know that they need to do in order to provide the appropriate sustainability to keep things alive. So I'll be more than happy to sit down with anybody. Again, when you're sitting behind a keyboard and you're just blowing smoke out of your hind end, I don't find that viable. So again, it's, it's just one of those things that somebody just always wants a response. It has to be this way. It has to be that way. It's just like, no. Do what you know best to keep something alive. That's it. Anyways, rant over. Gets me heated. I'm getting so sick and tired of the flakiness that I see going on. Um, it's just like that was the number one thing that steered me away from ever doing anything here on YouTube is due to the fact everybody thinks that they have an opinion that is factual. There is nothing factual about life. I do not know the moment I hit the red, rest my head on that pillow, are you going to wake up? You don't know that. You can't factually say that this is the right or the wrong way. And yeah, so. Woo! <laughs> Surprises! <laughs> I didn't get all my coffee, you guys. Sorry, that's what happens. Oh, the days of dealing with. Oh. Woo! <laughs> oh. How do you how do you know anything is real when you go to sleep? Yeah. <laughs> And this is why so many thought you're in the military. I used to train a lot of folks that came out of the military. So back in my old profession, like I said, I got nothing but respect for each and every one of our military men and women that goes to police, law enforcement, fire department. They need to be given a lot more respect, dang it. That's why I love so much about this hobby is due to the fact if I could financially afford it, because post-traumatic stress disorder comes in so many different levels. It's not just folks who are suffering from that in the, the recourse of, of, of doing that, but also speaking for somebody that hasn't served and not in that field, you're dealing with a different level of post-traumatic stress disorder. I mean, our son who's now started out a year and a half suffering from it is now over eight years of age. So again, it really comes in and it's not biased to any specific individual. So, but yeah. Me too, almost quit the YouTube. See, the thing is, I, I'm not a quitter at the end of the day. Uh, that's why I don't put out a ton of content because I, I'm just being completely honest with you. If anything, and I always, I said that, if anybody has been following this since day one, I think I even put it out on the video. 
and I know I've talked about it on live streams. If this ever, from a social media standpoint, ever starts to affect my desire to keep what keeps me sane at the end of the day, I'm done. I will hit that delete button so fast to run the other way. It's not worth it to me. Um, and, you know, I, I, I would say that with anybody. And it's not just about giving up. You know, you'll know when the appropriate time is and everything else. But, um, yeah. Yeah. It would just be interesting to see those individuals that have all this feedback. Have you actually even kept the tank? How long have you kept the tank? How, how many different species have you kept? Have you kept things from the wild? Have you not kept things from the wild? How long have you kept things alive? I want to start to see some evidence and some track record of, if, <laughs> of something viable rather than just blowing smoke out of your hind end. That's why I always tell you guys, don't just take my word for it. Do your due diligence. Understand what you know to do to keep things alive. That's what it comes down to. Uh, what do you think is a pur purpose of dreams? Uh, let's see here. It's your worst nightmare, laugh out loud, Priscilla said. Not even close, Priscilla. Let's see here. I can't really speak on, on that one as far as dreams go. Uh, but I think everybody needs to have hopes and dreams when it comes down to it, so. We got native fish keepers in the house. Are you keeping any uh, any natives yet? I'm not, but it's good to see you around, buddy. It's been quite some time. Uh, do you have any tips or tricks for determining the driftwood gathered from nature is hard or softwood? Uh, live on Lake Erie, and there's tons of awesome free driftwood. Uh, that I wouldn't be able to tell you um, definitively. I don't. Um, because I don't, I don't really get a lot of stuff like that. If I'm going to be utilizing driftwood, it's either been given to me or I'll purchase it. Um, but I do know how to go about doing the, you know, the my my thing is before I use any driftwood is I'll completely just nuke it to ensure you can oftentimes boil it to help it sink. But I even found with boiling, it depends on how buoyant and so forth it is. But that's really hard to tell because it depends on what type of wood it is. And then if you know how to identify what specifically what type of wood it is, then I think then you can determine whether if it's a hard or a soft wood. Uh, I know kind of the rule of thumb is if you see a lot of bark and so forth on it, it's probably not best to utilize that in your tank. Um, not to say you can't debark it and remove that and then go ahead and try to preserve it. Uh, the way I've done driftwood in the past, I've done it a couple of different ways. You can either try to preserve it, do try to reduce any type of uh, parasitic issues and so forth by either boiling it. Uh, you can use Epsom salt. Uh, you can use um, regular, you know, table salt, aquarium salt. You can boil it in that method. Uh, distilled vinegar, apple cider vinegar, uh, and then the, the way I would do it is if it was any like any waterlogged at all so it wasn't actually up you know on on the uh the shore uh to where it was dried out then i would typically let it sit and i've let some driftwood sit for over two years uh before even introducing it into any one of my setups just because i'm too concerned that i might introduce something uh into one of my tanks let's see here uh, White said, Mario asks, what type of water can you breed mystery snails in? Um, I just did a video on that. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you want to check it out, I just, when did I do, uh, two days ago? So feel free and check it out. Uh, then that will tell you my recommendations. Let's see here. Uh -oh. All right, a couple more questions, guys, and we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. So we're coming up on an hour here. Um, let's see here. And... Uh, 
yeah, as far as the whole dreaming thing, I'm going to give you a, just a polite and courtesy. Uh, just let's keep this to uh, aquarium and fish keeping because when we start getting way outside the box, it starts causing a lot of unnecessary confusion. So uh, newbie here cycling 20 gallon ammonia zero nitrite off the chart, nitrate barely um, detectable. You're going through your, a, uh, your nitrogen cycle. Uh, my recommendation is once you see zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and typically 10 to 40 parts per million nitrate, you generally at that point can feel confident and comfortable that you have now a cycled aquarium. So just continue it up. I'm not sure how long you've been um, cycling the tank. And if it's, uh, it might be going through, um, you, you have old and new tank syndrome, and you could possibly be starting a mini cycle depending on how often you're doing water changes uh, and so forth. Let's see. Uh, DPK said, I got question do fish some base since I notice in color seasons I see fish um, midday close to the surface. Just curious. Oh, it's very possible. That's a that's a valid question, DPK. I wouldn't be able to definitively say yay or nay, um, but it definitely, uh, from a, in theory, uh, you know, it makes sense, I guess, for some species, depending on where they're coming from. Any shrimp only tanks? Uh, yeah. Yep. Been breeding shrimp for 12 plus years now. Yep. Got quite a few there, shrimp only tanks. Uh, currently have uh, Neocaridinia devidae. Uh, and Neocaridinia heteropoda, and we got some Caridinia uh, tiger lines. Let's see here. Oops, I think uh, uh, food-wise, uh, a lot of good beneficial. That's where that mom comes in. But heaven forbid anybody use mom. Mom is just another way of saying detritus. Um organic breakdowns and so forth. But anyways, all those microorganisms, uh, they'll feed off from algae, uh, tetracolor granules is what I supplement once a week. Uh, I'm at cooler seasons, autocorrect. Uh, use old filter help. Let's see here. Uh, I've seen the video from the Ohio Fish, Fish Rescue Group that has gone viral, uh, kind of viral. If whoops, if not, check it out. Absolutely unreal. Uh, and no, I'm not affiliated in any way. Jim Poland did it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, Ed's Fish said, thanks. Brand new tank. Been cycling for a month or so. Yeah, just give it some time. Um and I, I, at this point, I wouldn't necessarily start tweaking things too much. It might just cause more of a headache for yourself. But in the future, you can check back in some videos. There's lots of content out there. But talking about uh, the appropriate and benefits that I find with jump-starting uh, nitrification cycle with a well-seasoned season, um, or seeded sponge filter, some type of medium that you can use in order to help jump-start nitrification cycle. I don't think I have any designated specific. Uh, there is actually, it's a 10 gallon setup or 20 long actually, how to set up an aquarium or something like that way back months ago in my repertoire. And I actually did talk in there briefly about how to help kind of jumpstart that nitrogen cycle um, and did a quick video on how to go setting up a, a newly set up tank uh, to kind of avoid some of those fluctuations. I noticed my blood parrot in cooler water uh, goes straight close to the heater at night. Um, it's possible. I mean, that's that's kind of hard to definitively say for certain. Um, but from that standpoint, I can I can concur that I've noticed some species, depending on what it is, um, kind of um, gravitate towards certain areas in the tank, especially at nighttime. That could be purely um, just kind of their comfort zone. Is it be interesting to know 
if that theory is accurate or not. If you rearrange the furniture, for a lack of better terms, or broke up the line of sight in a different manner, just kind of rearrange things, would they change their demeanor and their temperament? Uh, would they gravitate to some other place in the tank? Because uh, if you notice trying five or ten different variations on how the tank is set up, and it continues to gravitate at certain periods. I mean, you could kind of use an educated guess and then say, hey, this is the theory behind, um, you know, why they might be doing it this way or not doing it this way. So thank you guys so much. Uh, again, that brings us over an hour. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. If I did miss anything, feel free to go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, and with that being said, you guys, uh, make it a great rest of your night. Uh, just as a quick reminder, uh, any livestock purchases will have to be done by tomorrow uh, in order to go through the corporate quarantine and detoxing phase. Because if there is any purchases thereafter, you're going to have to wait until after the first of the year. Uh, but that is made well clear on our website. And again, that is for any livestock just to... Um, reduce and minimize some of the issues of delays uh and so forth so uh thank you thank you thank you all right bro uh big bro i'll catch you later kayla c thank you so much thank you guys all the moderators as always for dropping the links helping out within the chat thank you for everybody new uh and i uh, look forward to talking to you guys on the next one